Yo, still, man, what's the deal, man, yo. We got to get into this shit, man. We got to jump right into this shit, man. Um, first off, shout out to um, uh, 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 Josh Taylor for getting, the, you know, for, for selling the victory. And shout out really to Jack Catterall because I, 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 I did not expect that from him. I've never... I had never heard of him prior to this fight, and, uh, no, nah, fuck that. I never heard of him prior to this fight, <clears throat> and I thought he was going to go in there and just get, you know, get washed, and, man, I was wrong as two left fucking feet, man, so shout out to him for really, you know, venturing into somebody else's turf and, and putting on a, you know, a really, 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 really good performance, man, a real scrappy performance, but, um... This wasn't Josh Taylor's best night out. Just, just he didn't look that good in there tonight. He honestly didn't. Now, granted, he went into the ring, you know, in search of a knockout, and you can tell that man because he he showed no IQ in there. He, he, you know, he showed no IQ in there whatsoever, man. He barely used his lead hand. He was just really trying to, you know, line him up for that left down the pipe off of the jab. And it wasn't even a jab that he was trying to gain command respect with the jab to further open up opportunities to land the lead, uh, the, uh, the, the, your back left, his back left hand. He just went in there, you know, flickering with the jab, trying to, you know, flicker with the jab and then launch, you know, a, a two off of that. And it, it never landed. And he was so hell bent on throwing it that he was overshooting with it. He would completely overshoot the shot and he'd find himself on top of Jack Catterall and Catterall would wrap him up. Smart thing to do. Catterall was boxing smart, I want to say the early eight rounds. He was boxing really smart, man. Um, That first round he came out, he landed a really good left hand and everybody was like, oh, that shit took us by surprise. We wasn't expecting that shit. We wasn't expecting that. And you know, he, you know, he worked really good off of the jab. I think uh, Taylor strung together the next three rounds, and then Jack Catterall came back. You know, he started landing in combination with the, you know, with the left hand. And he landed a really big combination that opened up a cut under, you know, Josh Taylor's eye. Man, and he was out jabbing him. I want to say the, you know, what was that? Uh, let me see, the, going into the fifth, yeah, around about the fifth round, you started to see the pendulum swing back into the favor of Jack Catterall off of the first round man and he you know he had really good success with it man he was you know really good with the jab josh taylor was there to be hit with the jab yeah he was falling asleep right in front of him and every time he would do that he would get punished and he was it was bad enough he was carrying his his lead hand really low and one thing i was um i was seeing from taylor man you're already tall you're already tall man he's like you know you know weaving under the you know the the the, the straights and the round shots of Jack Catterall. And I'm, it was just kind of weird to me because I'm like, man, like, I get being an aggressor, man, but, you know, and then you was in a rhythm after the second, third, and the fourth round, man. I'm like, why aren't you getting back on your back foot and make him come and find the, you know, come and, come and answer the shot that you, you know, you would land? Like, why are you just standing there in front of him, man? It was just like, all right, whatever, man. Like, whatever with it. I'm happy about it. But I'm like, man, fuck, man. Come on, bro. So, Jack Catterall gets back into rhythm. And he lands that, you know, that big combination. And then I want to say in the eighth round, he scored a knockdown. I was like, oh, my God. This fight is slipping away from this dude, man. And he never really made adjustments, man. He, um, he would get, like, I'll say, like, in the second round, you know, he was getting to the side of the jabs and getting up under the jabs of Jack Catterall, man. But it was never really nothing like he wouldn't punish him after he would do it, man. Like we didn't, I didn't really see, you know, a, a good display of counter punching from jo, from Josh Taylor until later on in the fight after Jack's legs started to dissipate. That's when I started seeing counter punching, you know, you know, precise counter punching. Jack Catterall really started getting, you know, lazy, not lazy, but really getting, um, 
just uh, hell bent on landing that big overhand left that he dropped that he dropped Josh Taylor with, and it was leaving him wide open. It was leaving him wide open, and uh, you know Josh Taylor was able to capitalize on that. But that was late in the fight. Then mid rounds, I'm, I'm like, yo man, Jack Catterall's winning these late. He's, he's winning these middle rounds, man. You know, it was just, you know, I seen him, I forget what round it was, he switched for a split second, and I think he landed a short uppercut on the inside, but after that, it, he was just, he went right back to the southpaw, so I'm like, man, you have that skill set to your advantage, use it, you know, use it, because it even, like, I, I just, I, I, he didn't really have an answer for Josh Taylor's movement, even with him advancing and closing distance in the manner that he did. He had a better, you know, he did better when Josh Taylor was fighting him at a reasonable distance for him. That favored him. When he was able to snap the jab, because he was throwing the up jab all night. Cause he, he, he was throwing that up jab all night. Because, um, you know, Jack Catterall fought pretty low as well. But, he, you know, when Josh Taylor was able to close distance, he didn't really have an answer for the... He, he, he didn't have an answer for his footwork, man. So I'm like, you switch southpaw, man. You you know, you add that dimension to your game where you can, you know, come in at that angle and land that right straight down the pipe. Or, you know, you've got your left hand closer. That's the shot that you clearly want to land. You, you know, you can land that left hook. You know, you can land the left uppercut on the inside, man. He just, he didn't really show a lot of IQ in this fight. It just really wasn't a good display of Josh Taylor, man. Like, if you, if this was your first time watching Josh Taylor, you like, this is who y'all think could, you know, got a chance with Spence and Bud. Him? Because it just wasn't a good look, man. Now, granted, I think, um, I don't think it diminishes him, you know, who he is as a fighter. Because, because. Uh, you know, and the fights that was like, you know, all right, yo, this is for Undisputed, this is for Unification. These is fights that's really going to, you know, solidify me as, you know, who I, you know, solidify myself in the, in this, in this, in this, in this division. Those are the fights that he showed up for and he allowed his brain to get him the victory as opposed to just the brawn. You dig? He went in here looking to knock this dude out and he didn't even get a knockdown. He got knocked down his goddamn self. So, just wasn't the best outing for Josh Taylor, man. It, it really wasn't, man. He looked really, like, he, you know, he looked, he looked redundant in there. You know what I'm saying? He never switched his attack up. He didn't really tap the body like that. He didn't, he was just in there head hunting, man. And every time he would overshoot that left hand, Jack Catterall's already low. He'd wrap him up. And that's taking 10 seconds away from the action. The ref having to break y'all up. It was a lot of wrestling, a lot of infighting, a lot of tug of war. You know, it was an entertaining fight. It was a gritty fight. But it wasn't like, at least from Josh Taylor's standpoint, Jack Catterall showed a pretty good game plan. Jack Catterall showed skill in there. Josh Taylor didn't. Jack, Jack Catterall showed IQ. Taylor didn't. He just outfought him. He outfought him. And that's just. I'm not mad at the scorecard. Because I don't think I I don't think I scored a round for Jack Catterall after that knockdown. But it just really wasn't a good look, a good display of boxing for Josh Taylor. And, you know, for me to, as high as high up as I am on him, I'm like, yo, bro. But, I mean, sometimes you just got to go in there and say, man, look, I'm I'm not coming in here to box. I'm coming in here to crash your ass, bro. He won the fight, but he ain't crashed. Like, bro, like, Josh Taylor looked like he was on the wrong end of that fight, honestly. The way that he was, you know, scoring that left hand and the, you know, the, 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 the uh, what, the, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth? Man. So, I just, I'm not, I'm really disappointed in Josh Taylor, man. I expected a little bit better from him. I honestly did. I don't, I really don't think that that was a good performance, man. If you see that performance and you like, this is Josh, you're going to be like, hell the fuck no. Hell no. Nah. Hell no, and I think he got that victory because he was in uh, Scotland. Anywhere else, I think Catterall gets that win. Even though I'm not mad at the win, because I do think he slightly edged it. 
because Jack Catterall in the la after, like I said, after the eighth round and really going into the championship rounds, he would never meet him in the middle of the ring. He would never meet him in the middle of the ring. He would sit there and just, you know, kind of straddle the rope, and you know, he was, you know, he was backing up. He was backing up that right there, you know, that I, that's what I think was such a big uh, turning point for Triple G in the second fight with uh, Canelo. The fact that yo, you're going against your fighting identity by backing up. I'm not saying that he fights well off of the back foot and he was going against his, uh, or he, um, I'm not saying what I was saying about, you know, Canelo as it pertains to Jack Catterall, but how he was backing up, he looked, you know, he looked gassed and points and times he did look, you know, he was, he did seem to be getting a little flustered with the, with the, you know, the aggression of, um, Josh Taylor and the judges are looking at that and he is just, just like, yo, so I'm like, yeah, he's, yeah. He's losing these rounds. And then you started to see Josh Taylor tap the body. And um, that's how they was, would eventually got in this fight, man. But, you know, shout out to Josh Taylor. Even I don't think it was a good showing of Josh Taylor. I honestly don't. I was really disappointed in this performance from Josh Taylor. Because I'm like, yo, you are way better than that, bro. Like, way better. Way better than that. You know, and I want another thing I want to speak on, man, is that bull, you know them bullshit point deductions, man. I was rooting for Josh Taylor, but I was pissed when he took a point away from Jack Catterall. You know, he kept interjecting a little too. Now, as a ref, that you're supposed to interject and break up the action, but you got to know when to do that shit. You got to know when to say, "All right, bro," like, you know, I'm gonna let y'all fight out of this, man. But if it's just too excessive and I'm seeing a lot of dirty tactics on the inside, yeah, all right, now I interject. But he was just, you know, he was just kind of being that overbearing ref. And it was just like, bro, you know, going into the 12th round, you dig, you going, you know, Josh Taylor nudges him in the stomach. He nudges him back. You take a point away from Josh Taylor. Like, that's the type of action you want. That's the type of action you want. They ain't break out no brawl in the middle of the ring. It wasn't none of that. It wasn't none of that. You know, Jack Catterall, you know, you know Jack Catterall is he man pause but yeah man I, I did I didn't like that I didn't like that um that point deduction man I thought that was bullshit because I was rooting for I was rooting for Josh Taylor and for him to do that to Jack Catterall at the pivotal moment like that I'm like yo are you serious right now really like he may have shot himself in the foot with become you know with doing another championship bout dig it was you know the same shit with um when um anthony joshua was fighting um joseph parker it was just too much interference from the ref and it took away from the fight and it's like nigga what are you doing you, like, like bro like move man so I don't I don't see him being a dude that's gonna be called on for another championship bout they're gonna be like nah homie you Nah, that wasn't a good look. That wasn't a good look at all. You know, mm -mm. Now, granted, he did warn him for the excessive, you know, holding and all that, man. But shit, bro, a point? Completely disagree with the point, man. But, um, yeah, like I said, it wasn't a good showing for uh, Josh Taylor. He's going to be, you know, criticized for this, as he should be. Because he showed no IQ in there. He just he didn't make any adjustments. You know, Tim Bradley and, and Andre Ward was talking about him making adjustments. But I didn't see no adjustments in there. I saw the same, you know, the same, um, the same point of attack from him throughout the entire fight. The entire fight. I didn't see no adjustments from him. I didn't see really, uh, I didn't see ring savvy in there from him. I didn't see a, you know... I didn't see anything prolific about him this fight. And I'm not a big fan of taller dudes, you know, getting up under, you know, shots. I, I'm not a fan of that. It's dope if you can do it, if you can capitalize off it, man. But, you know, he would just, he was in there, get, like, yo, like, man, you, like, oh, my God. Get in there, hit him with something big, you know, use your, you know, use your mental. All right, cool, man, let me get in here and lay something big on him, lay heavy leather on him, and then get back out and force him to come and find me. You know, he was just really letting, you know, really accommodating dude and, you know, his 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 natural inadequacies. He was accommodating them, at, you know, in comparison to uh, Josh Taylor, man. So it really wasn't a good showing for him. But nonetheless, he got the victory and we'll see a better Josh Taylor 
in his next matchup. I know that for a fact. Because now he's looking like, oh, yo, he's, man, 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 he's looking like a pack to everybody else in that division. I know Teofimo Lopez gonna have something to say about that junior and senior. Even Bud is on there like, yo, man, don't, don't, don't disrespect me no more, man. I'm different. You know, I know Earl Spence gonna have something to say. He's looking like a pack to everybody, especially if he decides to move up. Especially if he decides to move up. They all gonna want to work with Josh Taylor after this fight, but he's not gonna fight everybody like how he fought him. He's not going to do that unless they can get in his head like that again. And even with that being said, it's like, all right, bro, like this, you know, now I'm in a bigger division. And, you know, we we fight smarter up here. And he didn't even fight the smartest fight tonight, man. And it almost cost him. So that's how I'm feeling about it, man. Salute to Jack Catterall. Salute to Josh Taylor. We hope to see a better performance from you on your next fight out, which I know we will. But it just had to be said, man. So y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Deuces.